Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to build this. This is a stainless steel walk station. On my other channel uh, I built um, a walk station out of mild steel, but uh, it got dirty and it's kind of hard to clean. So this guy here, I decided to make a second one. This is completely made out of stainless steel and it will be easier to clean, easier to maintain. So I just wanted to show you some of the features. This is just the walk. It's got two side tables, like that, that collapse and go up that way. It's on casters, so it's on wheels, you can see those there so you can roll it around. It's got this splash guard, or splatter guard I should say, that can be removed for easy cleaning. I can get in here and clean all of this. And then it's got a homemade burner that I made myself, or uh, I'll show you in the video that you can buy a burner, but there it is down there. I'm going to spark it up here in a second and show you. So yeah, this thing works awesome. Uh, what I like about it is it's going to be pretty weatherproof. It won't rust. Um, it'll be easy to clean. and. It's a vast improvement over my other one. My other one, I made two iterations of it out of mild steel. I gave one away, um, but uh, I figured that I've gotten to a point where I'm good enough at it that I made one out of stainless steel. So, let's get to it. I'll show you how it works, and then the rest of the video is me building it. I should also mention that I'm going to have lots of videos on my channel of cooking various stir fries and different foods on it. This is not only just a wok station, you can use it for deep frying, you can use it for if you brew beer, you can use it to heat up the water, um, you can also use it for like a corn or a seafood boil, or if you want to make big pots of something, this will work really well. So it's not just a wok station, that's what I'm calling it because that's my primary purpose, but I use it to make hamburgers on it, on a, to make a griddle, it works awesome. So lots of power and I'll just show you how it works right now. What I have here is my propane tank with a high pressure regulator. It's red. It denotes that it's high pressure, the red color. And then I have a, a valve on it to tell me the pressure. I run about 1 to 2 psi. And I also have this quick connect, which makes it easy to disconnect it and reconnect it from the walk station because I have more than one appliance that uses propane. This makes it really easy. So I connect this to this. And then I have the needle valve, and then I have this which turns the flow of the propane from the regulator and the tank to the system. This is on. The other thing I should mention is you do not use this, do not use this inside. This is not meant to be used inside at all. This is an outdoor only appliance. The other thing I forgot to mention is this has an electric starter on it as well. Electric ignition. And when I push on the button, it sparks. Which will ignite the propane. Alright, let's get to it. Here's the flame. And as I open this valve, get it really tiny like that so it's a it's a really really fine level control I can get on this all right there you have it let's get to the build video
So I started off by building the frame. The frame is made out of 1 8 inch by 1 inch angle stainless steel. So I cut up the bars of steel and then I fabricated the two sides. So here I square up the two, the one side, clamp it together, and then I tack weld it into place. Now I'm using stainless steel welding rods, which I picked up off of Amazon using a stick welder. So here I'm measuring corner to corner of the frame to make sure that it's square, adjust as necessary. You want to make sure you measure often. And I'm tacking it in place once I was happy that it was square. Once I got the two sides made, I now I'm going to make like a rectangle box and I'm using angle steel between the two sides. And I'm double checking for measurement. Um, it's also an 18 by 18 inch square on the top and then length, uh, the height of it is around 26 inches. Here now I'm measuring for squareness to make sure that it's a perfect 18 inch square. So you measure the diagonal. Here I'm measuring about 13 inches down so I can mark the braces. These braces also double as the burner mount. I clamp it in place. Again, double check for squareness. Then I tack weld everything into place. If you tack weld it and you lose squareness, you can always uh, grind out the weld and just re-weld it. So that's why I tack it first and I'll come back and I'll re-weld everything nice and solid. For the other two bottom support mounts, I had to cut out these notches. Now I'm welding these into place. Here I'm just adding some filler materials so that it makes up the difference between the pieces of angle steel. So to mount the stainless steel panels that will be the exterior of the walk station, I had to drill some holes and I'm going to tap the holes so it will accept some 832 inch bolts. That way I can remove the panels if I want to. Just as a note, to work with stainless steel is a real pain so it work hardens really easily so I had to heat up each of the spots where I wanted to drill to anneal the metal and then I could drill. Once I annealed it, it drilled a lot easier, but it's still really difficult to work with. So once the holes were drilled, I then used a tap to tap some holes so it would accept some 832 inch bolts um, to attach the panels. Uh, you can also just use a nut and just drill a hole through and not worry about tapping it, but I just preferred this because it just makes it a lot easier to work with uh, to take the panels on and off. So then I fabricated some little feet from some of the 1 8 uh, by 1 inch angle steel so that I could attach to some casters. Again, I'm annealing the steel before I start drilling it. It makes a huge difference drilling it once it's been annealed. And I should mention that the steel I'm using to build this whole station is 304 stainless, one of the most common stainless steels out there. So again, I could have bolted these on, but I decided to tap some holes so it would accept some bolts. 
I just like this because it's just a little bit cleaner, a little bit tidier. So now it's time to fabricate the burner ring that the wok will sit on. First thing is to fabricate the actual deck. So this is a piece of 14 gauge sheet metal, stainless as well, and I'm just tack welding it into place. You don't want to weld one continuous bead or else the deck will warp and that's not good. So make sure to just tack it into place. It doesn't really need a lot of holding power, so this will be just fine. Next I measured the center of the top. Using the top of a 5 gallon bucket lid, I traced it out onto a piece of paper and this will make it really easy to mark the center and line it up onto the top of the walk station. Um, you can use a compass, but this is just how I was able to do it. I didn't have a compass that was this big. So this is a piece of 14 gauge stainless sheet metal and it's 3 inches wide and around 42 inches long. I'm going to have to cut it anyway so it won't really matter. What I'm doing here is I'm bending it around a bucket so that I could make it into a ring so it's pre-bent. Ideally you'd have a slip roller to do this but this works really well in lieu of a slip roller. Because it's pre-bent now it makes it a lot easier to tack weld it and then to bend it into shape. So I'm just going to tack weld it and then bend it a little bit and then tack weld it and bend it a little bit and tack weld it. And that'll just uh, make a really nice circle right around where I originally drew the, the templated circle out on paper. And again, I'm just tacking it into place and then I'm gonna come back and just add some additional welds to hold it uh, nice and solid. You don't wanna weld really long beads because again, it will warp and it'll just make a, a real mess. So you just want to tack it in place. Here I'm just going to cut off the excess and I'm going to leave the back open and it's going to be an exhaust. Next it's time to cut out the ring from where we welded in the walk support ring. I just used an angle grinder with a zip cut and just uh, had at it, took my time. Next it's time to make the burner that will power the walk station. I have a whole other video on how to make this burner so I'll link it in the description and add it as a card right here. Anyways, uh, I'm doing a mock-up to see where it fits with some black iron pipe and some fittings. Once I'm happy where I want the center of the burner to go, I'm just filing down the spot where the orifice hole will go. I center punch where I want to drill the hole. I use a 1.3 millimeter drill bit for the orifice hole. I drill out the hole using lots of cutting fluid and use a drill press to ensure the hole is nice and straight. Once the hole is drilled, I test burn it to line up the burner tube. The burner tube is a 6 inch schedule 40, 2.5 inch wide inside diameter pipe. As you can see here, it works really well. I'm just testing it really quickly. It has a fine level of control for the flame, especially using the needle valve. Later on, I include a ball valve in this setup. Once I'm happy with where the burner tube should be, I weld it in place. Then I weld the burner tube assembly, the body of it, to two pieces of stainless angle that will be mounted to the frame of the walk station. Next I assemble the whole burner assembly using Teflon tape on all the fittings. Uh, I just plumb it to the spot where I thought it would be good on the left hand side of the walk station. To 
to plumb the burner to a propane source, I switch over to brass fittings, and then I incorporate a needle valve into the plumbing so that you can get a fine level of granularity and control over the flame. I also put a quick release onto it so that it can be switched to the propane source very easily. Here I attach it to the burner system and then I set the burner into place. Here I'm adding an electronic ignition system to the burner. It's a nice addition but it's completely optional. I'm tapping the hole so I can put a bolt into the tube. This is one of the electrodes that came with the kit. You can get this universal barbecue igniter system at any hardware store that sells barbecues. Here's the system all hooked up and you can see the electric arc. Here I'm testing the system. I drill a few mounting holes so that I can mount the burner system into the frame of the walk station. Another option though is you can buy your own burner and this one here is a king cooker burner for one of their uh, large uh, fryers, boilers, they make all kinds of stuff. Here's the actual burner box. You can get this off Amazon for around uh, 20 to 30 dollars depending on if it's on sale or not and then this here's the pressure regulator that goes with it and this will be able to get adjust and give you a nice fine flame or a really big flame so you need a high pressure regulator though I added two folding side tables to the walk station which is really handy for storage The folding mechanism was made by using some angle steel with some holes drilled in them, cut to one inch wide, welded to the middle of the frame, and then the support brace was made by using a piece of quarter inch round stainless steel rod and bent into the shape of a U. The two side tables were made from some finger jointed pine which were routered with a nice smooth edge. A coat of walnut stain was applied and then wiped off. And then multiple coats of varnish were applied to ensure a nice wetter seal. I added some hinges to the two side panels so that the wooden tables would have a place to be fastened. Here you can see how the mechanism works. It's almost like a French cleat so the rod then wedges in against this additional piece of wood that I'm screwing into the panel which then wedges and holds up the table. Here a hole was drilled and the igniter system was installed onto the side panel. And the last piece of major fabrication is to add a splatter guard. The splatter guard um, is mounted using a brace system and you can see here it's just a piece of 1 inch by 1 8 bar stock and then it's welded into place with some spacers. This was done all the way around the walk station on three sides. Here the panels are being cut round and then smoothed off. Notches were cut out on the splatter guard so that it matched the mounting system that was previously made. A piece of 20 gauge sheet metal was then bent into a 90 degree angle. I need two pieces 
to hold the splatter guard together. You can see here I'm drilling some holes through both pieces and then adding the bolts. And then you can see here the test fit of the back panel. And now adding the two side panels. The whole thing was bolted together. So the final step in this build is to clean up all of the welds and to give it a good cleaning and polish. Using some metal polish meant for car rims, the whole walk station was given a really good polish and then buffing. It just really pops once, uh, once it has a nice polish. Here you can see the completed walk station with the old one in the background. I think the new one looks really good. Alrighty, so this is just a quick follow-up video. Um, now that I've used it for a while, it's been a while since I shot all that other video, but I just wanted to point out, I ended up putting a ball valve in here instead of just having this needle valve. This needle valve works great. However, the issue with it is really slow to change the flame, whereas this, I can control the flame quite easily and quickly. So anyways, I went back to the ball valve. This is nice when I need a fine level of deep control, but when I don't need to change the heat quickly, and usually when you're cooking stir fry, you need to be able to change the heat quickly. All right, here's just some footage of me doing the first cook on it. It came out really well, super pleased with this. Here I got a little flame action going, um, vigorously moving the stir fry around. Um, you get used to using this uh, at, because it cooks at such a high rate. This whole stir fry only took like three minutes. Um, so you gotta just have all your ingredients prepared and ready to go and just have at it. It just comes with practice. Alright guys, this concludes this build video. I appreciate you guys watching and supporting my channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing to this channel 